America's Occupy Wall Street activists will descend on Capitol Hill later on Tuesday for what the organizers hope could be the movement's largest gathering yet. It's four months since the first anti-corporate protest grew into a nationwide phenomenon. Danny Chichikan reports now on how young Americans are frustrated with the power wielded by the giant corporations. The dream of starting their own business may stay just a dream for most young Americans. Armed with college degrees and loaded with hefty student loans, they enter a marketplace dominated by giant corporations. Robert Porter is a pharmacist. He works for a company that provides help to poisoning victims. He says he's glad to have a job that pays his bills, but sees no chance he could start a business on his own now. We sort of used to be able to go out, like you said, graduate, start a business, have a drugstore, but I think those days are, are, are going away rapidly. Personally, I don't know any young pharmacists that are starting their own business like that. Competition, CVS, Rite Aid, all the Walmart, Target, there's no way, there's no way a new pharmacist could compete. No way. And it's a shame. In the last few decades, thousands of independent pharmacies have been gobbled up by a handful of drugstore chains. This one is still standing, just steps away from a CVS. Its owner says they survive because he gives his customers what big chains can't give. A homely atmosphere. But even dedicated pharmacists like Hussein experience giants stepping on their toes. Hussein remembers how easy it was to start a pharmacy some 30 years ago. It was a lot easier back then to stay and survive. 30 years ago, they could just go in and easily open a pharmacy. Now, no. Young pharmacists, really, they already come with a lot of student loans and, and they really cannot obtain that kind of money. His two daughters are also pharmacists. I would much rather be in my own business, or at least a family business. Most of Zainab's fellow graduates ended up working for big companies to at least have a steady paycheck. None of them started their own business. It has now become a common tendency for the young in the U.S. Stark difference with the 80s. But many can't find even such relative stability these days. According to a report by Peter Hart Research Associates, a quarter of workers under the age of 35 in the U.S. can't pay their monthly bills. Another study shows the average net worth of those under 35 in 1984 was three times higher than it is now for the same age group. Millions of people's quality of life is diminished for the profits of a handful of immense stores and corporations. For most young people in the U.S., starting their own business isn't even a consideration. Most of them would be happy just to have a job that at least pays their bills. Many don't even have that. This is the poorest young generation in the U.S. for decades. And the question many ask is, what kind of future can they build? And what will they leave for the next generation? I'm Ganesh Chakyan reporting from Washington, RT.